All right. So did you know, here, let's start with this one. So you're basically this one company, they were doing $8 million on Amazon and the whole thing went up in flames. And so I'm going to share my screen with you real quick. This is shared by my friend, Matt Paulson, who, by the way, will be at the leveling up founders event. Uh, that's the mastermind I do for founders once a year, leveling up.com slash founders. If you want to learn more about it, but he's got a 30 to $40 million newsletter business. And his tweet here says this, this is what I've been saying for more than a decade. Don't build a business that relies on one big company, big tech company's whims. So basically this company went from $8 million per year to zero. It took this whole, this man's whole business away. Poof. Amazon is for sure the final boss of e-com. So it's a text message here. And it says in this text message, we did $8 million on Amazon last year. We are closing our business because of the new fees and because of Amazon's uh, 1P. So 3P, I know what's, What's first, is that first party fulfillment? One P? I have no idea. I don't sell okay. on Amazon. I know we help companies okay. optimize their listings, but I've never yeah. myself really. I think it has something to do with fulfillment. Um, so we have had exclusivity exclusivity on 100 products of Blanked Out Corporation to sell on Amazon. Blanked Out Corporation just terminated our contract because Amazon One P told them they would pay them more for the products we sell and we'll sell them for less because they do not have to worry about the three P fees. Right. Um, so so I'm watching, <laughs> yeah, I'm watching my inventory run out and then we'll get hit with a low, with low inventory fees because I cannot replenish my inventory from blank company because Amazon negotiated us out of the picture. We have sold $40 million in the last six years. I've spent over $2 million in advertising on Amazon. I would love for someone at Amazon to acknowledge or care that they put us out of business. Scott. Wow. It's a dog eat dog world. It's business. It's sad, but it's true. Yeah. I like, as, as I was reading this, I, I'm like, I feel bad for the guy, but I'm also, it's like props to Amazon for negotiating. Cause like that's within their interest. Um, I think the mistake that the business owner made in this situation was betting all their eggs, um, putting all their eggs in one basket. Um, you know, the, the, once you max a channel out, it's, in your best interest to diversify into other areas. So if one leg gets cut out, you can still sit on other two. Um, but if you only have one leg, then the whole thing crumbles, right? And so I think this is a lesson. This is just another lesson that there's always platform risk. And uh, just like, for example, even though Neil and I have an SEO background, um, Google's great, but we've diversified like this. We have our YouTube channel. Like, by the way, I, I showed YouTube the stats or Neil the stats the other day, 167,000 views in the last 30 days. Pretty good. Still growing, right? Um, how do we build, how do we diversify away from just Google? Because that's the world we're going into anyway. By the way, Neil and I have an agency owners group called the Agency Owners Association. All you have to do, just go to marketingschool.io slash agency. Once again, it's marketingschool.io slash agency to learn more. And now back to the show. Funny enough, I had one topic that I want to talk about. You and I have seen this. So I did something on Twitter. I was just an experiment and it did really well. And it ended up, uh, you know, the hook, I won't read the whole thing is, if you're going to use AI to write content, you can't forget about Drive. And I capitalized Drive, D-R-I-V-E. And I'll actually share my screen. And then I'll get to the point and what people can end up learning from this. So if you can see here on the screen, I capitalized Drive. I pretty much say that Drive stands for Data, Review, Insights, Visuals, Energy, um, spelling out Drive in essence. And I break down what each of those things are that posted quite well, as you can see here in the analytics at 359 hearts um, or likes, whatever you want to call them, 482 bookmarks, 36 comments and 60 reposts. But what's entertaining is, is, you know, I, I ended up creating this not because I wanted to share dry. I already knew the concepts on what you really need in AI written content for it to do well. But it was funny because, uh, you know, I was watching some videos online because I look at what's popular and what's trending for other people. And I see that people are using different things like, you know, skyscraper technique or they have different acronyms for stuff. And people are making up, you know, their own terminology like growth hacking. When you start doing some of those things, some of those terms take off. Some of them don't. It's OK whether they take off or not. But one commonality that I saw is if you start coining terms or acronyms, that social content typically does better than your other posts, whether or not it catches on on fire and everyone uses it going forward. But it's a really good way to create hits. 
Because a lot of people focus on hits by like, oh, here are 10 hook formulas that work. Well, instead of just copying formulas, try to create your own acronyms or try to create your own um, words or phrases that people could be using within industry. In other words, you're coining terminology. Um, and we found that to do extremely well for social media content. And b- by the way, like when you coin these terms, it's almost like posting reels too. You just don't know what's going to hit. Some of them will hit and some people remember. Like the skyscraper technique, it's still stuck to this day. I think it's it's got to be over 10 years now, right? Even Google coming up with double EAT, like people still like people repeating that over and over. And so with this acronym like drive, it might stick. It might not stick, right? But the fact of the matter is it's at least it's easy for you to remember. And if people catch on to it, then at the end of the day, you can say, oh, I coined that term. Yes. It, it, it's so funny because it's like if, if you end up doing it, one, it helps you with like speaking fees and things like that. Like if you look at Sean Ellis and growth hacking. Oh, yeah. From it. Yeah, he cleaned up on that one. I want to take a second to tell you about my podcast co-host agency. So NP Digital. So Neil Patel Digital. What they do is they do a whole host of marketing services and they are global. They're worldwide. They have SMB services as well. They have mid-market to enterprise services as well. They cover the entire gamut. So you can just go to mpdigital.com to learn more about it. And now back to the episode. By the way, you know, I, I got a report back on, remember I was talking about the this one company that that's paying like you know uh 45 50 grand a month or so and they're getting like 150 million views from this this um you know using different agencies so basically i checked in let me give you i'm gonna give you here's the clip of a moment so here's the roi of getting 150 million short form views per month so i checked back in with the company that's that that's paying agencies to do so and um maybe two three months ago when i checked in with the cmo i said okay you're, you're paying this amount and it's a good amount of money and you're getting 5,000 pieces a month and, you know, they're, they, they got you 60, 70 million views. Now it's like, you know, 100 million plus, right? And I said, okay, um, I'm going to, I said, what's the ROI of it? At the time, she's like, I don't, I'm not sure. We just started. Um, check back with me a couple months later. It has now been a couple months later. And I said, okay, just check it in again. What's the ROI been? She's like, honestly, we can't measure it. Like we have no sense of what the ROI is. And this is almost impossible to track unless you have a unique funnel that dr- drives this traffic into that funnel. Um, but we think it's moving us in the right direction. And funny enough, um, as we're doing this podcast today, I, I actually got a text message from Alex Lieberman, who's one of the co-founders of Morning Brew. And then my other friend, Steve Katina um, from Prey.com texted me too. He's like, dude, my, my friends are, are sending me, forwarding me your um, your Instagram reels. Like you're blowing up right now or whatever, right? And so- you know, there's kind of like, it, it kind of reinforces that. Like there's no direct ROI to this stuff. Like we did well in the last 28 days, 10 million views or so, and it's going to continue to go up, but it's like, it's hard to measure. Wait, you got 10 million views in the last 28 days? Uh-huh. Which channel or all combined? Um, All combined. So 2. 2.8 million on Instagram and then 4.1 on YouTube. And then um, another like four, another 4 million or so on TikTok. Is it the still the the rich uh, BFF? So it's, uh, it's diversified now. No, oh, good for you. Yeah. So it's like there there is an ROI, but it's hard to track. Like this is very much a dark social thing. And, you know, if you want to put the time and resources into it, great. I think we can keep compounding ours. I think you could certainly compound yours too, because at the end of the day, what I've learned from all this is forget about the overproduced videos. Um, I'm just like, just tell decent stories and you'll get good views. Yes. It really is good stories. The other thing that helps quite a bit too that I've seen is if you can just go out there and you can create content that is somewhat new. And what I mean somewhat new is, I'm not talking about just leveraging news and trends like that. I'm talking about if you end up talking about stuff that others aren't talking about, you'll do well. If it's regurgitated information, I don't care what subject it is, it just doesn't do as well. That's actually an important point, Neil. So for this podcast, the way we do it now is we're, we used to be, we used to try to get a month ahead. Now we're usually like two weeks ahead, which is riskier for us because Neil and I travel quite a bit. Um, well, you, you, you still travel a lot. I've, re, I've reduced mine. That's besides the point. But um, so what we do now is if a video or a topic we're talking about is trending, I'm going to highlight that topic in red. And so when my editing team jumps on it, they're going to move that topic up. That topic moves ahead of everything else. And so we're jumping on that topic because if we're talking about something that's trending today and the episode doesn't come out for two to three weeks, by that time, it's already gone down. We're not going to get as many views. And so it's really important to trend jack when you can. For sure. The trend jacking is huge. If you look at the all in podcast, 
what makes them do well is they're just covering current events. Uh, yeah, and it's it's once a week, so it's actually risky for them too. It's like, I mean, by the way, the fact that the, it's four people and they they all travel a lot, they're all busy, means that no matter what we do, we should be able to do once per week too. But but I think we're a little risk adverse to it. So yeah, but also on their end, what they also do is, uh, if someone can't make it, they bring in uh, another guest. Yeah, that does happen. which we which we which we can do too, which we do do sometimes too. Um, I wanted to bring up this other topic over here. This is from our. Um, or this is from my friend, maybe, maybe I, I think you met Eamon too. So Eamon Brand, uh, he was the CEO of AppSumo for a while. And this is interesting because I've talked to a couple of my founder friends. It's like, oh dude, they're like, you know what works really well? Gift cards. So when you send gift card uh, requests to people on LinkedIn, it's like, hey, well, I'll give you a $125 Amazon gift card or $100 uh, gift card for 30 minutes of your time. And so Eamon says this, so he's like, I'm about to use Shepard, support Shepard, which is like a VA or it's like a, you can, you can hire VAs there. So we're about to use Shepard to hire a doppelganger to sit in on all of these pitches. I'll pay $4 an hour to get a hundred dollars back, um, quick alpha. And so my point of this is saying, Hey, we might be at peak gift card right now because everyone's starting to utilize this tactic. And when all marketers start to utilize the same tactic, that's when it starts to just not work anymore. What's their so or Shepherd Doc Morris is I, I'm a little bit confused on this gift card strategy. So here's how it works. So imagine <clears throat> Neil, let's say I want to sell you marketing services, right? Okay. So I'll say, hey Neil, um, I'll send you like a LinkedIn message saying, Hey, Neil, um, I'll give you $125 at, uh Amazon gift card. Um, do you have like 30 minutes to talk about your marketing? You get what I mean? I'll, I'm basically yeah. just using that into like uh factoring into my meeting how much i'm willing to pay to book a meeting got it and so instead of running ads they're just pretty much giving away free gift cards correct and they're finding the conversion and all that to be still as effective yeah i'm assuming they're targeting very specific people account-based marketing they're only giving the gift cards to people they know that would be their ideal customer that's correct. And by the way, imagine if you did this and, and like you did this with uh, your email list, for example, and you identified who's on your email list, they're probably even more likely to convert. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But what I'm saying is if Eamon's showing two in a row over there, that means more and more marketers are doing it. So if you're going to try doing this, tr start doing it right now, because in a year or so, two years or so, like when everyone's doing it, that's when your converge rates tank. Have you seen the Frank Kern method where he just gives you 10 grand cash? Here's 10 grand no, for a call. No. Explain, explain. Like literally, guy shows up at your door, hey, quick phone call, 10 grand. He explains for what? What's the offer? Any offer that you're pitching. He's like, if you want to get really well networked with the, the right people, he's like, just have someone show up with $1,000, 5000 10 and he's like, here's the cash right now. Quick call. People are like, what the heck? And oh, someone, uh, so someone's going to ring your doorbell and I'll give you cash? Yes. Oh, okay. That that's even crazier because there's like human effort that's going into it, and it's hard, cold, hard cash. And you're hoping that someone doesn't run away with your cash, <laughs> being that yeah, is delivering it. Yeah. What's the incentive there? Like, I I just steal the ten grand. But I thought it was really cool because he's like, you want to get, you know, um, you want to do whale hunting and get calls with the right people. He's like, have people show up at their door with the cash. I was like, no, oh, I never thought about that. That is a pretty slick idea. Yeah. Hey, let me know when you do it. You can do it first. Uh -huh, I'm okay. But what's, uh, uh, you know, I was on the phone with, um, I was on a podcast interview with, uh, what's that agency? They're a D2C agency out of Canada. Dude, I, I don't know why I can't remember the agency. Either way, they're, they're a decent size and scale. One thing that they've been doing to get customers instead of giving away stuff for free is they just do a podcast which my teams talk to me about a lot. They're like, Neil, you should do a podcast just interviewing CMOs. And some of my team actually does this in different countries. We'll interview like the head marketing person at Procter & Gamble in Brazil or wherever it may be. And it ends up generating quite a bit of revenue for them because now you have your ideal customer on a phone call with you. I'm, I've, I've, so back, by the way, the Growth Everywhere podcast now called Leveling Up, like that's that's what I used to do. Um, it worked well, like interviewing, I, I, I used to mostly just focus on SaaS people or, or marketers. Um, I think 20 minute VC or 20 VC by Harry Stebbings that worked out really well. I think he started that podcast when he was 19 years old and he wasn't even a VC yet. Right. And he just interviewed a lot of VCs and then now he interviews a lot of founders and it's gotten bigger and bigger and that's let the deal flow for him. And it's, it's worked out well. Um, 
But and you he know, has, I like the formats. And but, he has a fund because of that podcast. He didn't have yeah. a beforehand, right? It would yeah. kick after. Yeah. And, and so everything worked out like getting the funding. Like, what? Oh, how are you going to get funding? Well, people have to know who you are, right? That's how he got the funding. How do you get deal flow? Well, people have to know who you are. And so it worked out for him. Um, it's a good business model. So that is it for today. Please don't forget to rate, review, subscribe. And if you want to join the Agency Owners Association, it's kind of like YP or EO, but for agencies, that's the group that Neil and I put together. You can go to marketingschool.io slash agency to learn more. There's an online co community and there's a live community as well. Um, and we look forward to seeing you inside. So goodbye.